Hello everybody and welcome to episode 37. Um, before we get started here, there's a little mistake we need to fix from earlier on in the series um, that I didn't really think about too hard at the time. It's sort of an inevitable thing when the code gets this big. Uh, having to add another thing will have probably screwed something up somewhere else along the line that we have to change. Um, in this case, it's in P entity. So I'm going to come to P entity. And you might recall we do ream start and we do uh, collision map equals this. Okay, so we get the collision map. Um, that, that's perfectly fine to just do in ream start and it's worked up until this point. Um, because when an entity is made, or, or um, a, like when we, or if it's persistent and we're bringing it from room to room, doing it at room start is perfectly valid time for everything to get the collision map because it gets it before it needs it. But what this doesn't account for is if um, one of these entities is actually created dynamically after the room has started, because then this will never get run. Okay, so and what we're going to need to do in this episode is we're going to create new bombs that you can actually like uh, use and throw, right? Um, and in order to do that, we need to actually create new entities um, mid-game uh, after the room start event. So that um, the way we fix that is simply by copying this and putting it in the create event. Okay, we don't want to remove this. We still want this because it, uh, we need it for items that move from one room to another. Okay, that might already exist and not be running that create event, um, but. Um, uh, have simply become persistent and have moved from one room to the next and they, they still need to get the new collision map for that room, okay? Um, so you just want it in both, get it in the create event of P entity, which will then be inherited by all of your entities and have it in room start, okay? Simple fix. Now what we want to do is we're going to come to player states um, and go to player state free and right down at the bottom here, um, uh, still within um, the function itself, be sure. So before the the last bracket there at the end, we're going to uh, write if key item and not key activate. So because we don't want to be able to do both those things at the same time. And global dot player has any items and global dot player equipped does not equal item none. Okay, that's a lot of anding. Um, we could avoid uh, the not key activate if we just elsed it with this big long thing, which is just the if key activate. But then that gets us tied in a little bit of a knot if we, you know, we have lots of keys we want to check against and so on. So I just prefer to do it explicitly here rather than keep making these nests like bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Um, you might remember, if you don't remember, key item was originally set to be control. So if I go to player here, just in the step, you'll see key item, keyboard, check pressed. Um, control, I think we set that up a long, long time ago, um, saying that it would be used in the future. And sure enough, eventually, uh, 37 episodes in, we are using it. Um, so if key item and not key activate, we have some items and we haven't got no item equipped. That means we want to use an item. Um, so I'm going to do a switch statement uh, based on what item we have equipped. So switch global dot player equipped. And then it's a simple matter of writing case item dot bomb, uh, open a colon and then write like uh, semicolon break semicolon is reasonable to write because we're going to write like something here that will end with a semicolon and then like break right and then you can just go copy and paste that a couple of times um, change item bomb to be item bow and item hook uh, respectively and default uh, to just break okay if it's you know, somehow none of those things like it's item none well I don't know if it's item I uh, type count somehow or whatever right we don't want it to do anything right um, if that's the case I'm gonna write some function names that we don't have yet but we're gonna make them so it's gonna be use item bomb and use item bow and use item hook okay um, that's the functionality for pressing the key, um, as I say, just in the free state. So when assuming we're not rolling or doing anything else um, and assuming we're not activating something or whatever, um, we can press a button and use an item. Um, now we just need to make these functions and have them actually do something. OK, so I'm going to make um, a new uh, script and I'm just going to call it use item funks. OK, um, we're going to put them all in here. So I'm going to write function use item bomb 
open bracket, close bracket. Did I do the capitalization on that right in here? Yeah, yeah, just making sure. Um, um, open your things. Uh, function use item bow. Open bracket, close bracket. Open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And last of all, function uh, use item hook. Open bracket, close bracket. Open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Now, these two are going to be blank for now. Um, they're going to be later episode stuff. Um, use item bond though. Uh, we're going to write if global dot player ammo uh, open square bracket item dot bomb close square bracket greater than zero. So if we have any bombs and global dot i lifted equals no one. So we can only do this if we're not carrying an item already, right? So assuming we have bombs to actually pull out of our pocket and uh, we're not currently carrying something, uh, global dot player ammo item dot bomb minus minus that will just reduce it by one. You could also do minus equal one or equals itself minus one. You know, you know the drill. Var underscore bomb equals instance create underscore layer x y instances o bomb. All right. Um, and then activate liftable open bracket underscore bomb. So that's going to create a bomb wherever we are and just instantly perform the code that picks it up. Okay, so we'll just sort of do the pick up. <laughs> It'll look like it's just sort of picking it up out of nowhere. All right. Um, just going to tab this back in. There we go. Um, and then that's it. As I say, these don't do anything for now, but that's really all we needed to do. We needed to make it so it reduced that number. Uh, assuming we had, like, assuming we have bombs, we're not carrying anything. Reduce the number by one and pull one out of nowhere. So we've got five bombs. I press control, and he just sort of pulls, pulls a massive bomb <laughs> out of uh, out of some mysterious back pocket in that in that cloak, I guess. And then he throws them, and they just they they act as as bombs do. Um, slowly reducing to zero. And if I press control now, you'll just have to take my word for it. Um, no more bombs appear. And that's it for that episode. I'm sorry if these episodes seem a bit like short and simple, but I'm trying to keep them topic focused. Uh, so obviously our last episode was getting the box to draw and all the, the items set up there. Uh, this episode was actually using uh, our items. So now we have the, the foundation for that. Um, and you know, affecting ammo and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of different sort of parts that mix together. So I wanted to break them apart as simply as I could and make sure that um, and make sure I keep you with me and that you're following everything that we're doing here as best as I possibly can, I suppose. All right. Um, so thank you for watching. Next up will be uh, item drop lists. Um, so now that we have a bomb ammo, we need a way to replenish it. So we're going to get them to drop from grass, uh, just the same way the coins do. And also just mix it up. Like sometimes the grass drops nothing. Sometimes it drops a coin. Sometimes it drops a bomb and so on. It's very, very simple, actually, um, but you'll you'll see that next time. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all then. A shout out in particular, and in no particular order, to the following. Max M, Raildor, Bowser the Dog, Seanathan, James Grimley, Robert Churches, Daka Dondigo, Bertie T, Relentless Rex, Jason, Darkrider0318, Rupinda, Rene Dam, Samir Nyaya Ligaglow, Yoram Pater, Cabbage Pants Figgy, Kaiser Ho, Reva, Verpaleon, Andrew Gilbert, Jason Welch, Phil Keen, Vacants, Jordan Hake, John C, Feral Princess, Arctics, Rachel Stewart, It's Matt Poor, Stephen Shenier, John Keen, Michael Kolich, Julian Cropley, James Ballard, Elizabeth and Landon Brown, Harvig, Tranquil, Jake Rumsey, Darth Wolf, Isaac Miller, Gary, Sean Paul, Eric Santana, Adrian.exe, Josh Furbin, Mankind One, JD Odea, Patrick Scheiss, Jiminy Whippets, Timothy Hare, Blunt, BSC, Troy Nile, and Adrian. Thank you all so much for your support and thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.